Hello and welcome to this edition of Connected with Lori. I am your host, Lori Caruso. As you know, we always highlight the future innovations of technology. And today on this episode, we are going to do just that. We are going to talk about digital electricity. What is it? What is digital electricity? Why do we need it? And what's the future hold for us with digital electricity? Please join me as I welcome my guest, Luke Ghetto from Volt Server. Hey, Luke, how are you? Thanks so much for joining us on Connected with Lori. Hi, Lori. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So we always talk about the innovations of technology, and there isn't something. Talk about digital electricity being innovative, right? Yeah. You know, I uh, I just joined this company recently, but uh, they're doing some really exciting things. And, uh, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, A lot of passionate people, a lot of smart people here, and uh, it's um, pretty exciting. Yeah, so Volt Server is where you've just joined. We're really excited to get into that and have hearing all about the details. So AC, DC, we know that we've heard that when we've talked about electricity. So AC, alternating current, constantly changing the current flow. DC is direct current, uh, one directional. What is DE? I mean, I'm hearing DE, digital power, digital yeah. electricity. Let's talk about that. What is it? Um, so I think the... Uh the best way that I've, I've heard the founders speak of it is it's kind of like uh, raindrops, right? Versus a river. So with AC, you know, you have a, a raging river, you know, can be, can be very dangerous. You know, it's delivering a lot of power, um, but it's dangerous. Um, whereas in digital electricity, we break it up into little droplets with each sm- very small amounts of electricity in each droplet. So overall, you're not cannot be hurt, harmed by it, but in the end, you have a great amount of electricity. So it really solves this in between space of where AC is a distance, you know, application and low voltage or PoE is a short distance, low power. It really fits that that gap where you need high power over significant distance uh, safely. Wow, that's pretty incredible. So tell me, I know, you know, when we're doing our, um, our builds for DAS, for distributed antenna systems and putting any infrastructure in buildings, we're always talking about the electric side. Tell me what are some of the advantages of using digital electricity versus looking at an AC or a DC solution? So I think the primary thing when you think about uh, commercial wireless is, you know, these things can't just be plugged into the wall. I mean, first of all, it's inconvenient, right? Where the radios go in the ceiling or something like that, there's not a convenient plug outlet, right? And you don't just want to plug it down, you know, on the wall where somebody's going to unplug it for their space heater or their phone charger or something like that. You know, these are critical networks that people rely on, not just for their data, but also for safety when calling 911, right? So, you want to make sure that they're backed up from power. So your options are, you know, to bring that dedicated AC lines out to everywhere you need power for the DAS um, or running something, you know, a little bit more local, like a low voltage solution. Um, But those are limited in distance. And where DE steps in is just like you have a head end with your DAS and your wireless communications Now you have a head end that supports all of your power infrastructure. So we locate all of our transmitters in the head end. They can be attached to a battery plant or a large UPS system or a generator uh, that functions as the backup power. And then it's distributed out to all the radios via our receivers. And now when you have a power outage or something like that, it's all backed up. People can still use their phones. Super important. And, you know, you bring up a good point. I don't know how many times we would receive calls from users saying, my BDA went down. I can't make any phone calls. My infrastructure doesn't work. And then we'd go do a truck roll, get on site to repair it and find out somebody unplugged it. Like Mm -hmm. literally somebody just unplugged it. And that is interesting because it was always because of a a power source, just like a fan or something was the culprit. So -hmm. really interesting that that's the case. So thank you for that. Now let's talk about, is this cost effective for the property owner to be able to utilize digital electricity versus anything else? We believe it's very cost effective. When you think about um, bringing out, you know, electricians, running these in conduit versus AC, which is in conduit, which is very expensive. 
um, you know, the cost per foot of putting that dedicated AC infrastructure in an existing building um, is exceedingly expensive. Now you can do everything in the same pathways as your fiber, as your ethernet cables. You know, so you can hire low voltage technicians. You don't need to necessarily permit for it. Um, and you can, you know, run it parallel to your fiber, which you're doing anyways in these deployments, right? So now instead of having a separate electrical contractor, a separate DAS contractor, you can have one, one neck to choke for both and, you know, solve it that way. So talking about Volt Server, where you're now working, Let's talk a little bit about what Volt Server is doing for future expansion, maybe. And what is there competition? I mean, since this is fairly new, is there competition for you guys? Um, I think the main competition is just the traditional sources. You know, digital electricity is not a household name, right? Everyone knows there's a plug in their wall, AC power, uh, DC power, you know, starting to gain traction with PoE. You know, more and more people, especially in the prop tech field, everyone knows what POE is. There's a lot of new devices. Power there. over Ethernet. Power over Ethernet, okay. right. Yeah, we use a lot of acronyms, don't we? <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, the power over Ethernet, you know, uh, there's a lot of, you know, multi-port switches out there. You can get these 48-port switches. You can hook up a ton of stuff to um, cameras, access points, um, wireless, all kinds of things that plug in but that's located in an IDF closet, right? So um, going back to our kind of our value proposition is you have many devices coming back and need to be powered. You know, they may not be within that distance limitation of PoE, um, or they may exceed the power requirements of PoE. PoE is limited to about 100 watts coming up right out of the switch uh, and about, you know, 300 feet or 100 meters away from it. So tell me also, I know that we talked about it's very cost effective. What about safety? You had mentioned a little bit about safety before. What are some of the aspects of how safe this is? So because of uh, the nature of digital electricity, um, we can immediately shut off the power in the power lines. So we are transmitting these individual packets. And once something like a short circuit is detected, um, a disconnect, an open circuit, somebody placing their hands across it, we immediately shut off that power. So that's why it can be, can be considered class two, yet still deliver significant amounts of power because it removes that danger to the end user. You know, that's why anybody can go out and kind of lay their own PoE cables um, because it's not a danger to the to the people connecting it. Uh, digital electricity has that inherent benefit of we're checking it 500 times per second. So if there is anything wrong in any of those, you know, periods, uh, we'll shut it down. So now do you guys have a knock or something that you're actually utilizing to be able to manage this from afar? Are you watching this from somewhere? So typically our customers are operating the NOC. You know, we have a, you know, intelligent software platform and our transmitters in the head end where you can monitor the whole power infrastructure. And we report that back to the NOC. You know, you can log in remotely from a GUI on the web or you can have SNMP traps that interact. Um, so, yeah, so you can log in wherever you are and find out what's going on to avoid those type of truck rolls for, you know, something that might be intermittent. So, Luke, we were talking about safety concerns and, you know, I'm curious too, for public safety infrastructure, you know, you need to ha always have the system running with, you know, battery backup or such. What type of redundancies are in place with this network, with the system, if there's a power outage or if there's failures, what happens? Well, so the way we address that is one through either a central battery plant or a UPS system located in the head end. So that's gonna serve as your primary backup power to the entire power distribution system. We also implement uh, what we call an N plus one architecture. So our power modules in the transmitters, we operate um, spreading the power between multiple ones with really a spare that's running live. So if any of them go down, the remainder of them can take over the load. Uh, and finally, you know, we have multi-conductor pairs that run in these cables out to our receivers. And we design the system with enough headroom that if one cable gets an issue, has a short or anything like that, the remainder of the cables 
can deliver that power. So there's a few le levels of redundancy in there to make sure that these radios never lose power. Well, and it's critical. It's important, obviously, especially when you're competing against ACDC that has, it's been operating forever for a very long time. And we know what that means. So coming into the marketplace with this new technology of sorts, I'm sure people are questioning, is it going to work for us? Can we rely on this like we'd be able to do with the transitional side? Yeah. And I think, you know, we can, we have a lot of proof that this works. You know, we are trusted by the world's largest mobile network operators. We are installed in hundreds of locations, including, you know, the Super Bowl arenas. We're in the Class A office buildings, hotels, casinos, and resorts. Um, people are sometimes surprised, um, you know, when we talk about where we're deployed. Um, the power infrastructure sometimes is kind of an afterthought for some of these installations. And they come to us and they say, we need a solution. And we say, look, we can, we can do it for you. And then we'll go out there and get it done. And we come back and, you know, we have these amazing success stories that we've, uh, we've, we've done for our customers. That's pretty unbelievable considering how long has digital electricity been out there for us to use? So the company was founded about eight years ago. Um, you know, I think we first came to market around 2015, you know, getting out there into the wireless space. We really found that there was a, a need in the wireless market for something like this for those reasons I mentioned, you know, having a low cost, you know, back, centrally backed up power distribution network um, in existing buildings where things like conduit core drilling are all going to be a, a major issue. Sure is. And we're going to get into that as well. And I want to hear all about some of your customers and some of your projects that you've worked on. But we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back after these messages. Engineering Wireless Services, EWS, provides comprehensive turnkey design, build, maintenance, upgrade, management, and consulting services in the cellular, public safety, and private LTE telecom business sectors. EWS has the experience, resources, and technical skills required to meet our customers' needs while ensuring compliance with complex local, state, and federal regulations. For more information on how EWS can help your communication needs, please call 480-968-6000 or visit our website, engineeringwireless.com. So Luke Ghetto from Volt Server, it's so great to have you on the show. I know we were just talking before the break a little bit about some of your customers. And I think it's important for us to understand this is out there. You're utilizing digital electricity right now and you're actually installing it in large arenas. You have lots of customers there and they're trusting you. Tell me a little bit about some of the projects you guys have been working on. Uh, so one interesting thing that we're doing right now is really these 5G upgrades, these 5G overlays, especially to stadiums. Um, you know, they're, you know, the 5G millimeter wave, it's a hot new thing. You know, the carriers want to get out and densify their networks so they can say they're the best. And, you know, they're going to these existing stadiums where they've got a 4G DAS already deployed, you know, so they want to upgrade that with these 5G new radios and they rely on us because our equipment is already there. And we have a modular scalable platform so they can just plug in new slots of power and run a couple new cables out to these remote areas, or in some cases use what we call dark copper. They provision for extra radios out at these sites and they will plug them right in. You know, So it's an easy upgrade uh, for these 5G overlays. Well, and it's important too. I mean, I do a lot of work in historic buildings, uh, old hotels, old buildings that don't have a lot of space. And, you know, from an aesthetic perspective, things have to be completely pleasing to the eye. And I'm curious, how do you retrofit? I know you had mentioned you can retrofit buildings, but what would you do in that case with a historic building or something that's limited in space in the IDF closets? What happens there and what's your advantage? Uh, I think the advantage is, you know, that these these buildings, you know, we can run in that same pathway as the fiber and the Ethernet. You know, we don't have to be out in the IDF closets, which are limited in quantity and limited in space. So we're bringing everything back to the head end um, where the primary size of the equipment will be less of an issue. 
Um, but the fact that you don't have to, you know, do a lot of drilling. Some we've run into uh, old hotels where they can't drill, they can't core drill because there's asbestos. You know, they cannot do that, and so they're looking for a way to bring in, you know, through their existing pathways, the power. And that, you know, skinny conductors that we use, you know, 16 or 18 gauge wires, uh, they really allow them to do that. Well, it certainly sounds like this could be an answer for us being that we see a lot of this and, and those space requirements sometimes are just so difficult to actually do, especially where, you know, the more infrastructure we expand on, the more space you need to be able to, to complete the projects the way we need to have them completed. So good, good to know. So tell me also, is there a certain capacity limit, limitation? I mean, when you go into these buildings, you might have small builds, you might have rather large builds, like you're looking at an entire arena sitting 30,000 fans. What does that look like as far as capacity? Do you, you know, shy away from certain projects because it might not work? Uh, well, the larger the project, the better for us. You know, where we struggle is kind of on those small applications, you know, certainly in a, in a building that's only using a BDA with a passive DAS, we don't really have an application. Um, you know, the more radios, the further away they are, you know, we can reach up to two kilometers away with our power. And, you know, we have receivers that are up to 2000 watts. So there are some cases where there are loads, you know, we're not going to be powering an HVAC system uh, or anything like that. But certainly, you know, some of these high power radios and DAS, you know, can get up to there. Uh, when you're talking about a rooftop macro, you know, 1500, 2000 watt radio is, is realistic. Um, so we've got those power levels down and we think that's where the value comes in is, you know, where it's above the distance and the power requirements of POE, uh, but below, you know, a certain threshold, probably around 2000 watts where you're talking about major infrastructure. Yeah, for sure. So if a building owner contacted you guys and said, what's my next step? How do I do this? I'm interested. I want to hear more about it. But what is my next step? I have to, you know, retrofit this building with a complete DAS overhaul. What do I do? What's your, what do you tell them? Well, I mean, the first thing to consider is not only the, you know, the DAS, right? Because I think one of our value propositions is that we do more than that. You know, we can provide enterprise level prop tech type you know, supplies. We can back up POE switches, which you may be running security systems off of. Those you may not want to go down during a power outage, right? Um, versus the alternative where you have a local UPS system. So a building owner that is perhaps struggling with all of these various pieces um, sitting in separate silos, right? You've got your Wi-Fi, you've got your DAST, you've got your, you know, security. Um, we can power all of them, right? And you know, at a lower cost, so you can centralize all that power into into one one system. So I think that when they're out looking for how do I back up, how do I get a centralized, resilient power distribution for all of these various applications um, at a lower cost point, a lower frustration point, you know, that's when they can come to us. We can sit down with them, look at their building, come up with a design, and you know, help them realize it. Well, that's awesome that you are able to actually support them to that level of effort when it comes to putting a design together. Because I know that, you know, when they're looking at this, and I always say, you got to have a strategy for technology, especially where it advances so quickly. And if you don't have that strategy, and that also includes your electric, because you can power so many different things, you don't want to have to be running so many different, you know, strands and, and having so much infrastructure when you're limited on space, you look at the strategy and you understand how it all works together. I think that's really important piece here. Yeah, you do want to look at the future. I mean, you know, we're t we've heard a lot about, you know, provisioning for extra fiber in places, you know, well, don't forget, you know, as you provision out all that fibers, it's going to be connected to something that probably needs power, right? So you don't want to have power now being your limitation when you've got tons of fiber out to the edge, you know, now you need a uh, power to the X strategy, if you will. Power to the X. I love that. That's awesome. And it's good to know. So talk to me about the future. Where, what's the future of Volt Server and where do you see digital electricity going? Um, I think one of the most exciting areas is around the enterprise, you know, powering different applications. You know, we're, we're 
very well known in the DAS space. We've done several, you know, high profile enterprise applications, you know, Sinclair Hotel and other ones that have, you know, been featured, one of that one being featured on your show. Um, and where we're backing up these, you know, different applications, whether it's, you know, something business critical, right? Like I said, security, Wi-Fi access points, you know, you want your employees to be safe, comfortable and productive in your building uh, in any situation. Uh, we've also delved into the indoor agriculture space. Um, we've uh, developed a special light fixture that accepts digital electricity natively. Um, so we're able to uh, send out a really high uh, light intensity to help these plants uh, grow when they're indoors. I am intrigued. I can't wait to hear more about that. That is really cool. Yeah, it's uh, something, you know, it's uh, very interesting for me. You know, it's, I, I, I don't have a cultivation background. Uh, you know, my background is completely in wireless and electronics. And now, you know, delving into how much light a plant needs to grow for, you know, the optimal height and weight, things like that. Uh, it's very interesting. Very interesting. Well, you know, Lou, this has been very informative. I really appreciate you taking us through the steps and what digital electricity is. And I'm curious too, and I'm so happy you were there landing at Bolt Server. It's so exciting for me. I know Thank you've you. been working in the past together and it's great to see that. And I know that was all during COVID. And I always ask at the end, what was your pandemic pivot? Like what did you professionally, professionally do before that you're not doing or you've changed today? Talk to us a little bit about that professionally and prof per personally as well. Yeah, so my uh, my professional uh, career over the last uh, year or so has been uh, quite quite a series of up and downs. Um, so I was at Microlab for about seven years, um, you know, doing very well there, like like the like the team and anything. And then at the end of March, basically when the peak of the pandemic was hitting us, I decided to to leave there. Um, you know, I took a risk going to a small public safety system integrator uh, that I saw had a lot of potential. You know, I thought they were positioned well. They were, you know, I was going to join a good team, you know, and it really helped them grow and hit their stride. Uh, unfortunately, um, you know, a lot of their business was dependent on airports and government agencies. Well, during COVID, a couple months in, who didn't have any money left? Airports and government agencies. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, I, I got let go there. I spent about a month being unemployed, pretty worried, you know, that this was not the best time to be looking for a new job. You know, definitely uh, weighed in my mind that you saw a lot of those open for work posts out there. Um, but I got lucky, you know, I, I really worked hard and, uh, you know, put my nose to the grindstone, as they say, looking for new opportunities. And uh, I engaged with Volt Server. I really liked what they were doing and they gave me an opportunity. And so I've been very fortunate, you know, that I've uh, gone through that and, you know, landed back on my feet. What a great success story during a, a challenging time, to say the least. And again, so excited to see you here. So excited to see you here at Volt Server. And I know you're going to do amazing things in the future. Well, thank you so much, Lori. I really appreciate it. And thanks again for having me on your show. It was great to have you as well, and we will see you out there again soon. Interested in being part of our show or advertising on our podcast? Contact us at info at for more information. We'd love to be a part 